is time for your favorite radio program, Chatting for the Word in the Morning, with your host, Brother Oscar York Divorce, where we are praying up and praising up and putting that all important snap, crackle, and pop in your Christian morning. Every time I wake up in the morning, I fall down on my knees and pray. Well, I thank God for opening up my eyes and blessing me just to see another day. Well, cause I know somebody didn't get up out of their bed, but God saw me. Thank you for another day. 
And now here is our host, Brother Oscar. Come on, Brother Oscar. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Wake up, wake up, and wake up. Uh, this is your host, Brother Oscar, your best voice. And we are getting ready for another episode of Chatting from the Word. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. But the big thing is, the most important thing is, are you ready? Are you up? Are you woke? And do you have your ears on this morning? We hope that you do, and we hope that you are ready to listen to another episode of Chatting from the Word, where we are praying up and praising up and putting that all important snap, crackle, and pop in your Christian morning. Yes, we are. Not right, brother Oscar. All right. Again, you listen to your host, Brother Oscar. We are so delighted to be with you this morning and to bring on another episode of Chatting from the Word. My friend, it's just a good thing to wake up praising the Lord in the morning. Yes, it is. It's just a good thing waking up praising the Lord, giving Him, let Him know that we appreciate everything that He has done for us so far this day. Amen and amen. Our introductory song was Banda. She was singing, One more day, Lord. One more day. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thanking Him for giving us uh, one more day. And I don't know about you this morning, my friend, but when I've seen the, the sun shining through my window pane, <laughs> if I can say that. When I seen the sun there shining through my window pane, I knew the Lord giving this old guy here another beautiful, beautiful day. Yes, he did. And he was the psalmist who said, Bless the this is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I'm thanking the Lord every day. Every minute uh, and the second, and every second of the day, for giving this old guy another chance, a second chance to make what's wrong in my life right, and to walk closer and closer with him. Yes, yes, yes. Now, we here on Chatting from the Word, we hope that you're doing the same thing. Praising the Lord, thanking the Lord for giving you one more day. We on the top saw, and not the saw on top of us, and we on this time side of life. The Lord has given us another t- t- chance to make it right. And we here at Chatting from the Word, we hope that you're not swandering it and not making it right. Because one day the Lord will return, and when he comes back for his church, for his people, will you be in the right place? <laughs> I'm laughing because many people don't like Brilovsky to say that. You must be in Jesus Christ if you expect to go to heaven one day. Amen. And amen. Again, we're so delighted to be with you and bring on this beautiful, beautiful program where we are praying up and praising up and putting the all important snap, crackle, and pop in your Christian, uh, Christian uh, morning. My friend, if you live in the portion of the world where the Oscar lives in, the West Carrollton, Dayton, Ohio area, the weather people says, it is 67 degrees and mostly 
sunny, 67 degrees, and mostly sunny. And to me, it seemed like it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful day. I believe they were saying on yesterday, it might warm up more today than it was yesterday. So, my friend, if you need to be out in the element of things, of things. If you need to be out going from one place to another, be first of all, be careful. Enjoy this beautiful weather that the Lord has blessed us with and be careful because so many things are going on in the world today. So many mass killings, so many people just just killing just for the you know, just for, just be doing it. So we, we need to be careful if we are going to be out there among people, among the elements, and among the world, the world out there. So we need uh, to be careful. And that's why we say here, stay praying up and praising up on this beautiful, beautiful Morning. Yes, 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 yes. You are listening to Chatting from the Word. Yes, yes, yes. You're listening to Chatting from the Word, and it's happened, and if this happened, if this happened, <laughs> Give <laughs> it right. If this happened to be your first time listening, we just want to thank you for listening in. Thank you for having your ears on. And we would love for you to know that you're more than just our welcome guest this morning. Yes, you are. You're more than just our welcome guest. You are our honorary guest. And we just want to thank you this morning for having your is on. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. And my friend, we just hope that you love what you're listening to. We really do. Here on Chatting from the Word, we hope that so far you are enjoying yourself, you're comfortable wherever you listen to the program, and you are enjoying the program, and that you are keeping your ears on, and we hope that you will keep your ears on through the entirety of the program, at least until we get to the chat, because, my friend, we do have a beautiful chat lined up for you. Yes, we do. And if you was with us yesterday, uh, you know it's a continuation of our study from the second letter that Brother Paul the Apostle wrote to the Corinthian church. The second letter, uh, verse chapter 7, verses 1 through 10, where Paul is talking about godly sorrow works unto repentance. Sorrow of the world work at death. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. What's the difference between uh, uh, godly sorrow and sorrow of the world? Do we know the difference? And my friend, uh, it's a big difference. It really is. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, hopefully today, and, and yesterday we talked about cleanse because uh, Paul tells us in the first chapter that we need to keep ourselves cleansed from all filthiness, from all filthiness and of the flesh, and uh, all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, just a reminder, and we're going to mention again, we talked about how to do that on yesterday, didn't we? And we hope that you uh, bear that in mind. If you wrote notes, uh, good. If you are, are listening, continue to listen to the program to really learn these lessons uh, that we're bringing to you Monday through Friday to be the Lord's will. We are glad that you are doing that. So, my friend, keep your ears on long enough, long enough to hear the chat. (laughs) 
Amen, amen, amen. I believe we're coming up to a station break, or either we are in a station break, or either we are back from the station break. <laughs> and if you heard the station break, we just want to thank you for coming back and listening to us here on Chatting from the Word. Because, my friend, we are still chatting from the word this morning and we're so delighted that you have your ears on and that you are listening this morning and we just want to thank you for listening in to us here on chatting from the word and my friend if you love if you love what you are listening to tell your friends tell your loved ones tell your neighbors that we're on at nine o'clock in the morning spread the news spread the news spread the news tell your friends on LinkedIn and instagram uh, facebook uh, and many many more internet networks that you are on this morning amen and a a man and my friend if you're wondering where you can listen to the program here's our announcer to allow you to know where you can listen to the program if you're wondering where to listen to the program, of course you can Google our program chatting from the word hosted by Oscar Wall. You can pull up many of our internet networks, iHeart Radio, Forum 5, Google Podcast, Breaker, and many, many more if you want to catch or listen to our program. Yes, yes, yes. If you want to catch our program, you can go to these entities. Our announcer just announced. And if you want to listen to us live, of course, we're on live on the Tumblr. We're live on YouTube. And we're live on... Um, <laughs> and we're live on many, many more. If you want to catch us live and listen to us live. And uh, we appreciate that. Very, very much if you will listen uh, to us live in the morning. Amen. And uh, a, a man. You are listening to Chatting from the Word. This is our prayer time, and if you have a prayer request that you want us to pray for here on Chatting from the Word, you can send it to our email addresses, which is lowercaseoscaryork3443 at gmail.com, or chattingfromtheword at gmail.com, or you can put it on our messenger page on Facebook page on any page that you're listening to the program through, and we should be able to receive your prayer request. Amen. And a amen. Again, my friend, if you have a prayer request that you want us to listen to, that you want us to pray for here on Chatting from the Word, you can send it to those entities our announcer just announced. Sweet Oh. Uh-huh. 
Amen, amen, and amen. Again, if you have a prayer request that you want us to pray for here on Chatting from the Word, you can send it to those entities our announcer uh, just announced. And as always, if you have a prayer request that you want to keep confidential, that's fine with us here on Chatting from the Word. We do respect your confidentiality. Just simply say, Brother Oscar, pray for me and call my name. And I'd be just so pleased and so delighted to do just, just that. Again, this is our prayer time. And uh, if you want to read along with us doing our prayer time scripture, you're welcome to do that. Our reading is coming from this morning is Luke 11, verses 1 through 4. That's Luke 11, verses 1 through 4. The Bible reads, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen, amen. The Lord was telling his disciples, when you pray, address the Maker as our Father, because that's who he is. He's our Father, who which are in heaven. He's our Father that sits high and looks low. My friend, are you ready to approach the throne of grace so that we may have a little talk with our Father? this morning. Let us talk with the Father. Our Father, our Father who sits high and looks low. Father, we come to you this morning in the humblest, sincere way we can, with our hearts, minds, thoughts, we lift it up to you. Oh, Father, first of all, we just want to thank you, Father. Father, we just want to thank you for being so good, so loving, and so merciful to us. 
Father, you allow us on this time side of life to see another day, a day that none of us have never seen before. But because of your love and tender mercy for us, you get, allow us to see this day, giving all of us another chance, another time to make it right with you. And this, Father, we're so thankful for. And Father, we want to thank you also for allowing the only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to come down from the beauty of heaven down to the sin-sick world to show us how to love, to show us how to live, and Father, to show us how to connect with you. And Father, we are so thankful for that, and for he himself to take upon himself the cross, becoming sin, taking our place, becoming sin for us so that our sins may be washed away in his blood. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that so, so much. Father, we thank you for loving the world. We thank you for allowing Christ to love us enough to give his life. And Father, we pray for all the mass destructions and all the things that has occurred in this world. Earthquakes in divers of places, fires and storms and hurricanes that ripping lives and people homes. Destruction everywhere. Oh Father, we pray for the victims of each destruction. Oh Father, we pray for all the mass killings that have taken occur or taken place here. Father, we Pray that you be with each victim, help each victim, our, our families of each victim that lost their lives to keep on looking up to you from whence coming their help. Oh, Father, we pray for wars, rumors of war. We pray for the nations and countries that's caught up in wars now. For we pray that they find that peace and that peace that brings about all understanding. Oh, Father, we pray, Father, for anyone out there, boy, girl, man, and woman, who want to accept Jesus and be a part of in the family of God. Father, we pray that you give them an opportunity to do just that. Oh, Father, we pray for those that have lost loved ones. Father, we pray that you put your comforting arms around them. Father, we pray for those that lost loved ones by the hands of the police. Father, we pray that you put your comforting arms around them. Father, we pray for each police officer who have given their lives in the line of duty. Father, we pray that you put your comforting arms around them. Oh, Father, we pray for all of our political leaders. Father. We pray, Father, that they never make laws forbidding us from worshiping you in spirit and truth, but make laws so we all can live in peace and in harmony. Oh, Father, 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 we pray, we pray, we pray, Father. Yes, we do. We pray, Father, for the church once again. Allow the church, Father, to be the lighthouse. Continue on being the lighthouse, leading others to Jesus Christ our Lord. And Father, we pray for all of our listeners this morning. Father, we pray that you be with them, help them through all their doubts and fears. Father, cast all their doubts and fears in that deepest part of the sea where they won't resurface anymore. Oh, Father, be with our program here, chatting from the Word. Father, help us to continue on doing this fine program. But we are praying up, praising up, and putting that snap, crackle, and pop in each listener's morning. Oh, Father, we pray for our, our nurses this morning. Godly sorrow works repentance. Father, we pray that we may say something this morning to help someone that's straddling the fence 
to help someone that's struggling, to help someone that just don't know. Father, help us that we may get the message of hope, love, and salvation to those who are seeking it and those that need it, Father. And Father, we pray for those that are having troubles and problems in this world. Father, we pray for those that's having having marital problems, praying for those that are having problems in their home. We're praying for those that's having problems finding a job to keep a roof and food in their stomach and roof over their heads. Father, we pray for those that are having problems on these jobs. Father, we pray that you give them the patience and the love to keep these jobs where they can be financially capable, able, capabilities. Oh, Father, we pray for each young person as a time to get a higher education. Father, we pray that you be with them, help them to succeed where they can be uh, useful when they once they graduate. Father, we pray, Father, for those who are incarcerated. Father, we pray that you be with them, help them to serve their time. And once they are out, they might be morning citizens and hopefully citizens of your kingdom. Oh, Father, we pray for the church and the many problems many churches are having. Father, we pray that they look up to your word for guidance to all the problems that they are occurring. And Father, we pray for those that come to preach and teach in your word worldwide. Father, we pray that you give them the fortification to keep preaching and teaching your word. And Father, as always, Father, we pray that you keep us encouraged and never discouraged. In Jesus' blessed name do we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. I want to thank you for reading our scripture text along with us, for praying along with us, and as always, we hope that we pray for something that's on your mind. And as we continue saying, if you have a prayer request, you can send it to those entities we continue on announcing. You are listening to Chatting from the Word. I was subject for today is sorrow into repentance taken from 2 Corinthians the 7th chapter sorrow unto repentance. Yes, 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 yes. It is that time, that time where we are chatting about and from the Word of God. And we hope that you kept your ears on long enough to get to this portion of the program. And as I have said on several occasions, this is about the uh, best part of the program for me is when I'm chatting with you uh, from the Word of God because it's the Word of God that's going to save us in the end. And not Brother Oscar and not no other man, but the Word of God. Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and for us to be in His body and be in obedience to the teachings of Christ and His apostles. I mean, Oscar don't have no heaven or hell to put you in, but the Lord would need to obey the Lord if we want to spend all eternity with Him. Again, we're so delighted that you are with us this morning, and we. Uh, so happy to uh, be a part of your day and to be able to praise the Lord and to pray up and to 
put that all important snap crackle and pop in your Christian uh, Christian morning. And but we want to do us a favor. Yes, we do. And most know what the favor is. Well, Oscar just want you to, 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 to <laughs> I'm sorry. To get relaxed. You get relaxed, get relaxed, get relaxed. Are you relaxed? We hope that you are. And if you are, go ahead and have your favorite morning beverage. Coffee, tea, milk, juice, hot chocolate, cold chocolate, whatever it may be. We're not talking about the hard stuff. Cuss that out the window. And get relaxed. If you relax, reclining your reclining chair, go ahead on and recline out. If you relax sitting at your dinette table, go ahead and have a seat. But what we request here is for you to have a copy of God's Word so that you may follow us in what we are, are chatting about, teaching on, or talking about this morning so that you can see that we are coming from the Word of God. And as I have said on numerous occasions, if I'm wrong by the things I have said, anyone who knows better, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm the smartest cookie in the cookie jar, but anyone out there that knows better, that knows God's word, hey, correct me, but at the same time have book, chapter, and verse of God's word uh, that that you want to correct me on. Don't, don't say something that... Your preacher said, or say some mom and daddy said, or grandpa have said, but what is contained in the Word of God? Because that's where we're coming from this morning. The Word of God, that's what we're studying from this morning. The Word of God, that's what we're chatting on this morning. The Word of, of God. And we hope that we have said uh, some things to help you uh, with your Christian walk, and we hope for some help those to find the Lord. Okay, and this is our, this is what we're trying to do here on Chatting from the Word, help you to live for the Lord and to help those who find uh, the Lord and to help people, <laughs> you know, Stay in the body of Christ. Stay in Jesus Christ. When the world is teaching what it's teaching and doing what it's doing, it makes us wonder, doesn't it? And some of us, we, even in the body of Christ, we get so relaxed at what the world is doing, and some of us, we want to be just like the world. And I admit, the world got a lot of, a lot of things out there to catch our attention and for us to be uh, drawn out of the body of Christ. And Satan, he will do that. Satan is busy. <laughs> and I guess that's the best thing Brother Austin can say. He's, he's busy, and that's why we got to stay in the Word of God. And sometimes it's not easy when, like I say, when everything else is trying to get our, it's battling, and I guess I can use the word battling for our attention. So turn with us this morning to 2 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, the second letter that Brother Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. Okay, turn with, with us. And we're going to, let me say this about what we were saying yesterday. We were talking about uh, cleansing. Here Paul mentioned how, uh, in the first verse, how we should cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And on yesterday, we went to uh, first John, the first chapter, and we see how we should cleanse ourselves. Because here John said, we all have sinned. And for anyone to admit that we have not sinned, we call God a liar. For me to stand here to say, well, I'm perfect, bro. Oscar, don't sin. I'm telling the Lord I don't need you. I need the Lord because I am a sinner saved by grace. And when I'm doing something wrong, when I can't overcome some things, 
I'm going to tell the church, help me. Those that went through some tough times, help me. If you know something better, to help me help my journey. We hope that you can do that. That's what it's all about. And then in the second uh, chapter of John, John telling us that Jesus is our propitiation. He's our go between. He's pleading with the Father. Give that guy one more time. He, he's struggling. He's struggling, but he's trying. He's coming back to me. He's trying, but give him one more time. That's why we serve a good God. We serve a God that's by second, third, fourth, fifth chances. He gives us so many chances. It's always up to us to come back to him. It's always up to us. When we get lost out there and the world has grabbed us, when Satan has us by our collar, that's the time that we need to just get on our knees and pray and stay in prayer, stay in the body of Christ and tell others, I need to help confess your faults. James says in James 5. Now, I'm not saying tell them every little nitty gritty that you're doing, but just stop saying. I need help with it. We all need help. None of us are perfect. And none of us are better than anybody else. Don't think you're better than Brother Oscar because you can afford those uh, pointed shoes and nice dress, uh, nice suits and a uh, Cadillac <laughs> to, go with, to go with it. And if you're walking straight and narrow, Hey, don't don't look down on me because I don't have those things. I admit I don't, and I don't think I ever will have them, but that's not what I'm striving for. I'm striving to live for Jesus Christ now. If he blessed me with it, fine. Right now, I don't have those things, and I don't really search for those things. I just want to just keep on, keep on living, keep on living, keep on living for him because I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner saved uh, by grace. And in verse 2, and we're going to go uh, to this uh, uh, verse 2. Paul said, receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. Let me read, let me read that again because it sounds like to me that Paul and others always had to prove themselves to their audience, to who he's speaking to, to who he's writing to. And here Brother Paul says, now receive us. Now this is the second letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. And you think by writing the first letter that Paul wouldn't have, need to go to this proving himself to the Corinthian church. But here Paul is saying these words. Listen to what Paul is saying. Paul said, receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. Paul said, we have done no wrong. Yeah, when I was Saul, yeah, I persecuted the church. Yeah, when I was Saul, I, I pulled out people and and, and took them to courts, and that's when I was Saul. That's not me anymore. I'm the ambassador of Jesus Christ. I'm the apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm the one that was crying in the wilderness. Paul said he saved me by his grace. Paul said I'm not that man anymore. But now I'm Paul preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe, and if I'm wrong, I apologize, but many of us can associate with Brother Paul this morning. I know I can. I used to be that man. I used to be that way. I used to lie still and connive people. I used to think this way. I don't think that way no more. I, I recognize that sin, that sin is wrong. That sin is going against the word of God. That we need, to, I need to live more and more for Christ and do his will. We all have a past, my friend. But Paul here is telling the Corinthian church, it is safe, you can receive us. We have done nobody 
nothing wrong. I haven't done nothing wrong to you, Corinthians, but tell you about Jesus Christ and him crucified. And then Paul, in verse 3, says, I speak not this to condemn you, for I've said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. He said, Corinthians, listen to Paul. And I believe Paul, if I could see Paul's face, he's telling the Corinthian church here in a way of pleading and begging them to accept him constantly to let them know that I'm teaching and preaching the word of God. He said, I speak not this to condemn you. I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to bring you down. I'm trying to help you. I'm telling you the truth because I want you to be saved. I'm telling you the truth because I want you to stay in the body of Christ. And when Christ comes back for his church, we all together be heading to heaven. So Paul said, I don't do this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and to live with you. He said, Paul said, I'll die for you, Corinthian. Right now, I'm living for you. Right now, I'm telling you the truth when it comes to the word of God. And then verse 4 said, great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glory of you. I'm filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulations. Yeah, Paul said, knowing all this, knowing the great, knowing the glory of you, I am filled with comfort. Knowing that you're trying to do what's right, Corinne, knowing because of my boldness of speech towards you, great is my glory of you, I am filled with comfort, I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulations. Not saying that he's wearing a smile. Not saying he's giggling through all his tribulations. But saying knowing that current you are Corinth, that, that you are trying, and knowing current that, that you have received me, knowing current that you're okay. I can find some peace of mind knowing that. I can find some joy in knowing that. Okay? I can find that joy. I can find joy now through my tribulations. Knowing I didn't suffer for nothing. Knowing that my suffering mount to something. Knowing my tribulations count for something. And I can find that joy. To what end my tribulations? And then Paul said these words. Paul says, For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fighting, within were fears. Oh, Paul is telling the Christian church, we, we, when we came up to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings. We had to probably not literally fight, but many times Paul and others was under great persecutions during this time. They tried to kill Paul and the rest of them. Paul and the rest of them were fearing for their life. But Paul said, without were fighting. Within with fears. Oh, my friend, I wonder how many preachers today, if they was under the stress of Paul, would they still preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ? I know in some part of the world uh, the gospel is not welcome. I know some part of the world, many of our brothers and brothers, along with their wives and others, are trying to teach the gospel, might be under strain and and to teach and to preach the truth of the Word of God. And they may know firsthand what Paul is feeling here. 
Paul is saying, and this is what Paul said. Paul said, we, are, we were troubled on every side. Without, we're fighting. Within, we're fierce. But he said, nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down, confronted, comforted us by the coming of Titus. Now, why was Paul comforting? By the coming of Titus. And it's beautiful here because remember, Paul met Titus, left Titus in Corinth. Titus helped the Corinth church too. And listen to, to what Paul is saying here. Paul is saying in verse 7, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation where he was confident in you when he told us, told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. He said, because y'all y'all finally received me. Y'all finally listened to me. Titus told me, y'all all right. Y'all going to be all right. That brought me joy. That let me know that all my tribulations that I was going through was worth it. Paul is saying, now I can find joy in you, Corinthians. Oh, my friend, it's, it's just a joy when you see brothers and sisters trying their best to live for Jesus Christ in the world that don't love Christ. And I'm under the assumption, and I apologize if I'm wrong, but the world needs Christ. I always need Christ. I, I hear people say the world needs you back with God. We're all we need a Christ. We're all we need a Christ. That's why Christ died on the cross. That's why he came the first time called the world needed Christ. And the world need Christ today. Need Christ today. Meaning, and like I say, many brothers that's out there around the world that's trying to teach and preach God's word, they are dying for churches to teach and preach Christ's word. That's right. They are being stabbed. Now, in China, there was a couple of people that were being stabbed because I don't know if they are the body of Christ, they were Christians or, or what, but they were stabbed by, because they were doing uh, mission work. And it's sad to see people getting hurt today with all the laws, the bylaws that's in place today. We still live in a world that needs the love of Christ and the love of one another. Amen, 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 Brother Oscar. Uh, that's all I have for you today. We are so thankful to uh, be with you today and to bring on another episode of Chatting from the Word. We hope that we said enough to you this morning to lead you in the right direction, to help you to overcome some things that you are suffering through and to see Christ in you and to show the Christ in you this morning. We hope that we have been some assistance in just doing just that. We need to get on out of here. We're so glad to spend this morning with you and to be able to praise up and to praise up with you on this beautiful, beautiful morning. We pray with me, please, our Father, which art in heaven, now Lord, be thy name. Thy kingdom is here, thy will is being done. Father, we just want to thank you for allowing us to bring this program to the airways, Father. We just want to thank you, Father, for allowing us to teach and preach your word. It's a blessing. And Father, we pray for all of our listeners, Father, we pray that you be with them and help them to walk with their snap, crackle, and pop, which each step that they take, showing the world Christ in them. Now may the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us until we meet again. In Jesus' blessed name do we pray. Amen. And amen. Love somebody. Love everybody. Bye-bye. And may God bless.